Welcome to the Predictable Revenue Podcast, where frontline sales leaders teach you how to build and scale an outbound sales team. Welcome back to the show, everybody. My name is Colin Stewart. I'm your co-host today. Today, I'm joined by another founder, um, and he's going to talk to us about how he's helping his company grow 10% month over month by using outbound sales and uh, trigger events. Everybody, welcome Tukan Daz, the founder of LeadSift, to the show. Hey, welcome. Colin. Hey, thank you. Thanks, man. So, so tell me about, let's, let's jump right, here, right in here. Sure. Um, you're getting some pretty awesome response rates and not just respond, like overall response rates, but positive response rates using these trigger events. Tell mm-hmm. me about that. Yeah. So the whole idea at, at, at our company, we, we rely heavily on, on outbound, outbound prospecting and outbound marketing. Um, and the reason we do that is because we, we don't have a ton of inbound traffic coming in. There is, there are leads coming in. So we had to sort of rely on outbound. And uh, when we looked at outbound, doing outbound prospecting, it was very much when we did research and it was very much a static list building type approach where, you know, you'd go to a tool, there's, there are a bunch of different tools, right? Or you go to LinkedIn where you slice by company size, industry and job title, get their contact details, go to LinkedIn, look at the profile, build a list, and then, you know, cold call or email. Um, we were doing it ourselves, that thing. Uh, but but the problem was um, what we found was just because someone had a specific job title at a target company didn't always mean they were interested in our business or sort of in the buying journey at that moment. So as a result, these these busy people they would they don't get back to you. And uh, and the other thing is everyone else is using the same way of generating lists, so they're probably hitting them with the same message at the same time or a different time. So mm-hmm. we, we looked at ways of you know, figuring out other ways of choosing accounts and, and contacts to go after. And, and that's when we started looking into the whole trigger event idea. And, um, and, and we have been experimenting with it for 18 months now. And it's been really successful. And um, we use a combination of different you know, trigger events and we're always adding new events. Mm-hmm. But... Um, like, for example, one of the big ones in, in B2B, at least for us, is anytime we see a potential prospect talking to uh, a competitor anywhere on a public forum, um, that's a signal for us saying no. And if they happen to be in, uh, in our ideal customer profile, mm-hmm. that, that's great. I, I would like to get in front of them. I, I love, love the idea of like monitoring the general internet as, as a whole. Well, maybe not as a whole, but you know, using the internet and all yeah. the social medias and all that um, to make your your outreach more relevant. Mm-hmm. I, I think we've all we've all been on the end of like sending emails, and we're like, ah, eh, it's probably the same email that yeah. everybody else is sending, and you know, you get an okay response rate, but when you really break it down, it's not you know an overwhelmingly positive response rate. That's correct. You know, I, yeah, I got yeah. a thirty percent response rate, but like every one of those persons, people yeah. was telling me to like, yeah. please unsubscribe. It's like that is correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why when I look at response rate, it's tricky, right? We have heard companies, and I've spoken to people where they're like, you know, we get a twelve percent response rate, and I'm like, oh wow, that's that's really high. But then when you dig deep, they're like, please unsubscribe or yeah. take me off your list. Um, so that's, I think, so that there might be a definition response versus positive response rate. We call them hand raisers. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. We look at positive responses as well. Um, and some, some people look at when you're talking about positive response rate, like what, what does that mean? Is that the percentage of, <laughs> of all emails that turn positive? Is that the yeah. percentage of people that you emailed that turn positive? Mm-hmm. You know, like what do those look like? And, yeah, yeah. and your numbers can go from looking like crap to looking like, very amazing good. very yeah, quickly yeah, just by yeah. reframing oh yeah. oh yeah oh yeah yeah so so what are we talking about in your case this so is the- what we we see on an average about four to five percent of people having a positive response rate and by response rate i mean if we send 100 total emails to 100 unique people um four to five of them will will raise their hands and ask to learn more or book a meeting so that's what we mean by response rate positive response rate at least gotcha 
And so, I mean, I've talked to, we've had a bunch of companies on, on here and a bunch of guests on here talking about, you know, how to, how they get, you know, 20% response rates and things like that. Like yeah. if you're, if you're curious, um, I think Ryan O'Hara from lead IQ had a yeah. really great one. That guy is like super talented. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, really funny, loves the, you know, loves the eighties and the nineties, <laughs> good taste in music. Um, so we talk a lot about that in the podcast and how he incorporates those tastes in to his, uh, into his email outreach. Um, mm -hmm. we all, we've also had, you know, Terrence Kwok from Vidyard on here talking yeah. about how they use video. Um, and then Andrew Gazdecki, um, talking about how they use gifts, but, but all of these, all of these methods, they're just, it's so time consuming. I mean, recording this podcast alone, this, this is like an hour out of my day. Yeah. There's no way I could do this for a yeah. hundred prospects a day or no. even, you know, 10 prospects a day. I'd be, you know, I'd never see my family. <laughs> So I, I imagine you guys are getting great. Res oh, I know you guys are getting great response rates. Yeah. You're not spending 10 hours a day recording video. So no. like, tell me your secrets. I mean, the, the biggest secret, what we found out was anytime you talk about outbound prospecting, right? Anyone who's sending some kind of cold prospect, whether it's by email, phone call, social, however they're prospecting, it's still very much based on a buyer persona. Um, that that a marketer has defined or their CEO have defined or somehow they have defined that. Or nobody defined. Or nobody defined. <laughs> somebody was just clicking around. Possible, right? Or they yeah. have looked at which clients and some of them use proper signs where they have like, we have one accounts in this industry, so let's go deep in this industry or this vertical, mm -hmm. which are all great, but they're very much still static. Um, the way we look at it is it, it, it and has been working and it possibly can work, but it's getting saturated and it's everyone is doing that. Mm -hmm. So, so for us, the, the approach we take is how about we look at some signals that indicate these people might be potentially interested in buying or, 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 you know, interested in learning more about this topic. This is their, they're either in the, you know, lower end of the funnel where they're in the buying mode or mm -hmm. they're starting exploratory search, being keen about it. Um, how can you find that out? Now, the tricky thing in B2B is, people don't actually go on any public forum or anywhere and say, hey, I need a new you know, marketing automation system or a new web server infrastructure. No, no one talks about it, right? So the trick is how can you find out these latent signals, if you may, of intent or interest by, by looking at the in internet as a whole? Um, mm. So that's really our secret. That's what we try to do when we try to figure out who is looking for us product like ours. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we use a whole combination of different signals. As I mentioned, one of them is looking at competitors before, before we jump yeah, in, yeah, um, yeah. cause we're going to go deep into, we've got a variety sure. of these different triggers. Yeah. 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 I, I just, I'm just hoping people, you know, they perk up and they listen just a little bit here because the, one of the, the challenges that I think a lot of new, uh, companies have with outbound initially is the fact that the leads feel or the, the meetings the whatever you want to call them feel different than inbound. Right. Yeah, they and, are. Um, they're they're totally different. Yeah, I think one of the the biggest challenges is you're you know with inbound there's motivation, right? They're motivated, but they're not necessarily qualified. Yeah. Whereas with outbound, you can sort of set your qualification criteria and say I'm only going to email companies yeah. that I think are qualified. Yeah. Yeah. But on the bottom half, you don't know if they're motivated. That's correct. And and, and this sort of solves this sort of trigger based approach solves that by saying, you know, it's not going to solve it entirely, but it's you know, it's going to get you a little, one step closer to all, almost being an inbound lead because you're finding people that are actively thinking about it instead that's of just correct. the right person uh, at the right type of company with no pain. Yeah, that, that's exactly it. Yeah. Awesome. Um, just wanted to restate. I know you've said that all, all already, <laughs> but sometimes, I, you know, it just needs to be said a couple of times so people pick up. And, you know, yeah. If you're walking yeah. to work and- Because that is the work, key. This yeah. is the most- important thing in, in that, 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 that comment that you made is with regards to prospecting is, is, is flipping the model. Um, and, and you, you define your ideal customer profile, the qualified companies or buyer persona from there on, you're trying to figure out who would have a probability of, you know, buying or learning more about my solution. That's mm -hmm. what, it, if you think about it from a technical perspective, it is sort of like a classification problem where you're trying to classify which company given this time would be interested in this product. So, mm -hmm. yeah. 
Really like it, man. Um, so before we before we jump into each individual mm-hmm. trigger, yeah, um, you've got some. You're going to screen share a little bit later on in the yeah. episode, right? Yeah. So if if you're driving, please don't watch the video. Um, but you know, maybe find us on YouTube. Yeah. Subscribe, check it out there because uh, Tukan's going to share his screen. He's going to actually walk us through how he gathers some of these signals. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're, we're going to talk about you know, how you do it manually. Um, and if you're, you're lazy and you want to part with some cash, you can always look up what Tukan does and uh, probably find a way to spend a little bit of money and get a really good result. Um, but we're going to talk about how you can do all of these manually without any tools. Well, without any paid tools. I think with the one we might use is... Uh, I think we're using, we're going to look at Hubs, or not HubSpot, Hootsuite. Uh, Hootsuite but the free version will work. Perfect. So yeah. shoestring budget edition, how to go through some of these trigger events. Yeah. So we've start, you've already mentioned um, talking to a competitor. How, yeah. how, and how do you find, like, walk me through the process of, yeah. how are you looking for these conversations? Yeah. So, so at the very beginning, it starts off by defining two things. One, um, who are your competitors and also complementary companies, uh, mm-hmm. companies that are not direct competitors, but sort of complement your solution. Um, so first you need a list of those companies. It can be five, 10, 20, whatever the, the space, space number is. So that's one. Second, what you need to do is you need to define what are key industry topics and terms relevant to that. Like what are people creating content about that, that you want to track? Um, so you would define that. And then, there, there, there's a broad variety of ways. So first is, as you mentioned, social media, like social networks uh, could be a great source for, for capturing that. Um, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, maybe Facebook too uh, are, are possible. Some great sources uh, of capturing the data. Blogs, forums would be great. So let's say, um, to, give, give an, to give an example, let's say you're selling a marketing automation software, right? So in, in, in that case, Let's say your top competitor is Marketo, HubSpot, and, and Pardot, maybe, right? The, the top three. Um, isn't it, isn't it pronounced Pardo in Canada? Is it? <laughs> maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not, a, I'm not Canadian enough, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong part of Canada, I guess. Wrong eh? part. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, so, um, for example, so you come up with these competitors, and you go to Twitter, or you go to Hootsuite, as I as, as mentioned, and I guess we'll, we'll share my screen and show it there. So you, you go in and you just type in the word Marketo in there and get a stream of people that are talking about Marketo or, or, or HubSpot or Pardot or any of them. Um, look at that stream of people having conversations in real time right now. Um, you can go over them and, uh, and see which people um, fit your buyer persona. Meaning, is there a VP of marketing talking about Marketo or is there a VP of marketing talking about HubSpot inbound conference that they're planning to go? Uh, that's a great signal for you saying, all right, the VP of marketing is now talking about market or, uh, or HubSpot. I don't know if they're going to buy a new marketing automation software, but at least this is top of mind for them. Uh, rather than going after every single, just because if you search on Google, or not Google, on LinkedIn for VPs of marketing, there's probably, I don't know, 80,000 VP of marketing out there in, in North America. You're not going to go after all of them, but you might get a list of 20 or 30 that are, that are, that are in your buyer persona and are actively thinking about marketing automation. So chances of them talking back to you, engaging with your outreach, whether it's on social or email or cold call, uh, it are, is a lot higher. So that's, that's one very easy way to, to build your list by tracking competitors. So it's not, you don't need a lot of proprietary or secret technology. You can do it. It's a, it's a little bit of manual work, but you can get started with some, some basic free tools. Perfect. And so beyond, beyond tracking or listening about listening for mentions of competitors and comparables, mm-hmm. I guess, mm-hmm. well, you know, what else can they, what else can people so, watch out for? So one thing is, um, so pretty much every one of your competitor in every industry will have um, a social profile, right? Um, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, maybe Instagram, YouTube, all of those. Um, go to their social accounts, look at who they're following, who's following them. Go through that follower list. You can manually go through them. Maybe do it once a month. You don't need to every day. Uh, go through it and see if any, any there's a new VPs of marketing that have connected with them or any buyer persona that, is, that have connected with them. So that's, excuse me, so that's a great way of figuring out, all right, these people are not 
talking to them, but they're following them or they're consuming their content, there's a chance that you know, these guys are prime. They already know about marketing automation. They're aware of it. They might be looking for my solution and it might be a good timing. So let, let me get in front of them. So that's one way. Um, the other way is find out um, the key executives of your competitors. So find out who's the VP of sales, the CEO, the CMO of your competitor, and see who's engaging or talking to them on, on public social channels. So if you see, you know, let's, let's take the example of Marketo. So if you see someone talking to the head of sales of Marketo uh, online anywhere, um, and that person happens to be uh, head of marketing at another startup that you can potentially sell to, that's a good signal for you to say, probably I should reach out to that company, their CEO and their head of marketing. Because the fact that talking to the VP of sales, this is top of mind for them. Let me, let me try it. Right. So, so that, that would be one, one, one great way. Again, this is all focused around competitive engagement, um, specifically as a signal. Mm -hmm. um, there, there, there are a few other signals. So for example, another way is, uh, as I mentioned, um, you, you need to know your competitors and you need to know your industry, right? You need to have, you always have you know, key topics and events around your industry. So let's say you choose in your industry, account-based marketing is a big term for you that, that everyone is talking about, right? So go to any, go to Hootsuite and type in the word ABM or account-based marketing and see who are the people that are actively taking part in that, in those conversations. Now, one thing you will notice, I will warn it, uh, a lot of the people that are talking about ABM or account-based marketing or any specific topic that you are interested in are actually practitioners and vendors themselves. So if I have an account-based marketing solution- I'm, sh I'm shocked. No um, I know, it is, it is surprising. <laughs> eh? but, yeah. but a lot of them are actually vendors that are talking about it, as they should. But um, I would say roughly, again, there is no fix. Number one out of 10 are actually not vendors, but rather prospects that are taking part in those discussions. That those are those that one out of ten. That's ten percent is the one that you need to pick up and go after, uh, because they are actively the fact that they're they're talking about it, researching on it, means this is a priority. They're thinking about it. So why not go in, go after them? So that's one way of of um, building your target list to go after. Um, Perfect. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. But before we pivot into yeah. how how do I do this? Are, yeah. there, are there any other sort of trigger events that yeah, I should keep, keep in mind? Job changes. So job changes are a are a massive trigger event, and there is there's there's quite a bit of data where they say you know a VP a new VP who's hired um, makes a million dollars worth of buying decision within the first thirty days of their hiring. So so that's a pretty impressive and big number. And it makes sense, right? You, you hire a new VP of marketing or VP of product or something. Very rarely do you see them coming in and saying, yeah, we'll keep it as, as it is. Never happens. Most yeah. of the time they, they change some things up because you know, maybe they, they used a tool from last past, past work or, or, or something like that. They want to change things up. They want to make a difference. So that would be a great signal for you to go after saying, give me a list of companies or, or research and find companies that have had a new VP of hire. Or on the flip side, let's say you are selling um, a security software, right? Uh, cyber security software. Look into job boards, right? Uh, you can use Indeed or, or even LinkedIn actually, and say, give me a list of companies that are hiring a head of security or a security analyst. That's a good signal because if they're hiring a head of security, uh, chances are they are, looking, they, they have put a priority on it. And if your software solves you know, online fraud or online risk and, and those kind of things, that's a perfect opportunity for you to go after them. So that's another signal. Um, third is events. Um, so you, know, you spend big money in, in attending industry events, Dreamforce and, and, and then the whole lot. Um, so people who go to events, um, so if I'm going to, let's say a customer success specific event, that Gainsight organized, um, chances are either I am a Gainsight customer or I'm very interested in learning more about customer success. So this is, this is top of mind for me. So if you could figure out who are the people that are attend, going to be attending uh, an industry event and you reach out to them saying, hey, you know, I know you are going to gain this, this industry event or 
or you don't even have to mention it. You go in with your pitch about your customer success solution, knowing that this is top of mind because otherwise they would not have bothered going to an industry event. That's a very timely intervention and, and, and interception, I should say. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so yeah. It, there's a whole other episode we could do on that. We, we, <laughs> we've done a couple, um, but the one we did most recently, Yusuf Khatib um, hmm. from VanHack, um, he basically, they used that to book 60 meetings at their last, the conference they, they went to last. There you go. Without sponsoring the conference. Yeah, that's, that's the best part. You don't need a booth. You don't yeah. need a booth. You, if you can figure out a way to, to, to identify the people that are likely to be going that fit your buyer person or reach out to them, the chance of you having the meeting doubles up actually. Yeah. So, so yeah, so that's a, that's a great way. The other thing, um, going more technical, it might not be ap- applicable to everyone, um, GitHub. So if you're using, um, you know, if you if you have a developer product, right, and um, and if there are any open source solutions, and uh, see who are the people that are following that that repo, right? People who have starred them, who have, um, yeah, people who have starred them, who are following them. Look where they work. Look at their job title. That might be your end. So you, if you see someone is following a competitor of yours, their their open source project. Or, uh, or if they are, you know, following a complementary technologies open source project on GitHub, that's a great signal for you to say, all right, they're interested in this stuff. This is definitely a priority for them. And if that person happens to be in a senior role, uh, great. If not, you can start from the bottom. You can talk to them, and they might, you know, bring you in to the to the decision maker. So that's another great source of um, figuring out which companies to go after. Perfect. Um, any more before we pivot into into how? Uh, one one th- th- there are probably a few more uh, yeah. that, that 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 I'm missing out. One one interesting one is uh, uh, would be RFPs. Um, again, it probably doesn't apply to everyone, uh, but there are some public RFP databases mm-hmm. that you can go. Uh, you don't have to pay for it, and you can just sign for. You can just search for it. You can search for the different RFPs that are happening. And uh, you can get a list of companies that have an RFP out for a new accounting software or a new infrastructure software. And then from there, that's your lead. You, mm-hmm. And if you sell that software or service, you reach out to them. So, so yeah. Even if you're not necessarily bidding on those, right? Like if you're selling an adjacent service, I think those could be really, really 100%, beneficial. 100%. It's a guy who spent more than more time than I'd like to admit chasing RFPs with a lot less success than I'd like to admit. Hmm. You know, chasing RFPs, in my opinion, isn't isn't always sales. At least the way that I was doing it, it wasn't yeah. sales, right? It was like searching on the internet, downloading some documents, and then like getting somebody to submit a quote. It was sort of like almost I was almost an order taker, but I wore the the title of a salesperson because you're not doing you're not talking to anybody. You're just no, you're not downloading papers. Were, but, were you doing it at, at your last job at Carb? I know a couple of jobs ago. Got yeah. it. Got it. Yeah. yeah. I, used, I used to sell hardware. Oh, wow. Big, big clunky hardware that, yeah. Yeah. Kept, kept power running. So, but, but was, let's think about it. Let's rather than if you, if you think about it from a different perspective, rather than just f- filling in the RFP, what if you reached out the VP of sales or VP of IT or whoever that, that, that at the company that posted the RFP, you might have a better chance or better insight into what the processes are even winning the deal. So that's, that's exactly what we ended up doing uh, oh, there you while, is I would look <laughs> for companies that were trying to sell like diesel yeah. generators or trying to, yeah. sorry, buy diesel generators. Yeah. And I, we also sold them, but we also rented them. Huh. And so I would use that to find, Hey, is your gen down right now? Are you guys going to need something in the transition? And we, we got a ton of business that way. Nice. So yeah. That using, makes perfect yeah, yes, we, we use those as like a signal for like selling other related services. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, that's a big shift from selling diesel generators to predictable revenue, man. That's a, yeah, yeah. It was uh, the, the, the very, very short story is yeah. uh, I was tired of selling hardware with very, very small margins. And I'd always mm. wanted to start my company, my own yeah. company. Um, yeah. And I was just tired of helping. I, I've been, hired a couple of times to help companies get from, you know, one to a couple of million or a couple of million mm-hmm. to a couple more million. Yeah. Um, and I just, I was tired of doing it for other people and I wanted to do it for myself. And then yeah. it's sort of, it was one of my, my strengths. And so when we sort of started this company, that's what we ended up, you know, kind of building that's it great. around. That so is great. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Cool. 
So let's uh, make an interesting segue into, sure. you know, it's great to talk about, you know, all of these triggers. How am I supposed to find all these? It sounds like a yeah. ton of work. Yeah. Well, we, we can, I guess I can, I can share my screen and yeah. show you some, some tactical tips. Um, let's do it. Do, do you need to make me? Nope. You, there's a little green button at the bottom of your screen. Share screen. Yeah. It's Got hidden it. right in plain sight as soon as you move your mouse. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. see it. I just need to find out. What For those of you that are listening right now, now is the time to transition to, to YouTube um, and check us out there. Um, should be the same name as the, as the podcast itself. Um, just search us. You know, we're under Predictable Revenue Podcast. We've got our own channel. We put uh, the episodes. We put highlights up there. And you can see Toucan's whole screen and follow along as he's going to walk us through exactly how he, uh, he creates some of these uh, for absolutely free. Yeah. Cool. So can, do you see a Hootsuite screen? Got it. Perfect. So I have a, I'll go through a few of the different ways we can, uh, we can use you know, free tools to, to generate leads. Okay. Perfect. And um, if something's not clear, sometimes I tend to go too fast. Um, just stop and ask me. Okay. Perfect. Thanks. So, so this, is, um, this is a Hootsuite dashboard and, uh, and this is free. So you can sign up for Hootsuite and you get, you get access to this. Um, what, what you see here is this is a stream of leads, um, stream of tweets, actually. Um, so there, this, is, uh, this is, I'm tracking the keyword Marketo in here. And these are all the people that I've been talking about Marketo uh, on public forums in the last, you know, 30 minutes. Um, you can look into each one of them um, and see if, if these, are, these are relevant people to go. So for example, and, and, and here's the trick. Obviously, as I mentioned, you know, if there is 100 conversations, 90 of them probably will be not relevant to you. It's, that's a reality, unfortunate. But, um, but 10 of them are worthwhile. So especially if you're, if you're running this on a shoestring budget, um, it's, it's totally worth it. So just like scrolling down here, um, these are the people that have, that have engaged with them. So I can click on any one of them. And, and, and see their profile. I can, I can see who they are uh, quickly just from the profile. I probably do not have a lot of context on this. So I'll, I'll skip and they don't have, like their bio doesn't seem interesting. So I'll move on from this one. Um, let me cancel this. I go down. So this is, a, this is a good one. So, oops, and it refreshed. So this person is talking about, you know, they're going to market a user group December event. That's a pretty good signal for me to say, and this guy is a marketer user. And if your software is selling um, tools complementary to market or any marketing automation, John would be a great guy for you to go prospect. So this is someone that I would then, you know, research further. I will kick on their profile. I'll see where John works. Um, it looks like he, he works in marketing automation. He has a link to his Twitter, his website. So I can click on the website, I, I, I'm not sure. So he works at this company called Social Marketing Technologies. Um, this is where he works, you can click on about, and he is the... <clears throat> Looks like the man in the picture. He is, he is the, he's the owner of this company. So it if you- would be talk, hilarious if John was listening to the podcast. That'll be funny, right? Yeah. Uh, I hope he does. And he will get probably people trying to sell him market or solutions now. We should start but, tweet, tweeting at him, yeah. Uh, there you go. So, so you, you can then now go after John. So that's, that's one easy way. Uh, I, I shouldn't say easy, but that's, that's, that's mm -hmm. an example of you finding a lead and going after them. I feel like the trick, the trick here is not just to like filter for all of Marketo, but to try and find more like uh, deeper relevant filters to, to go from all of the conversations about Marketo and filter it down to the, you know, the 10 of the 10,000 that you're going to look at, you know, these are the 10 that I'm going to look at. Absolutely. Today. Yeah. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. So I'll give you a classic example. So here I'm tracking for a keyword, uh, account based marketing, for example. Um, so this is, this is something that might be relevant in your industry. So I'm getting a list of people. Uh, I keep going down. So I see Kevin, uh, who is an account based marketing practitioner. He's talking about, you know, he's sharing some content from B2C community about sales and ABM. So if I want to, if I have an ABM solution, um, I would look at and look Kevin up. Um, and uh, you can see he is the, he works at this company called Creation Agency. 
they're selling, you know, ABM big data and all those things. So he would be a great person for me to go reach out to. And I can reach out to him on Twitter. I can follow him or I can send him an email and say, hey, you, know, you can refer to this article or you can talk about your ABM solution knowing this is top of mind for them because 43 minutes ago, he was talking about this. He was sharing this with the world. So this might be a good thing. He might be looking for ABM solutions for himself or his clients. So that's a perfect example of you prospecting, right? So that's, a, that's another way. Um, I, I know I talked about following people on Twitter. So let me open up Twitter and let's, let's do this. So let's say, you know, you're selling to Marketo. Um, so let me open my Twitter and let's search for a Marketo. So I go and my computer is pretty sluggish or Twitter is either one of them. Yeah. Anytime you're screen sharing on zoom, it uh, does tend to slow down a little bit. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, so let's say I see Marketo. So I go to their profile. Uh, one simple thing that I can do is, um, so this is great. So there's about 47,000 people that, um, that Marketo is following. There's 151,000 people that, that is following Marketo. Now, obviously not all of them are, are, are fit for you or can be your customers, or maybe they can. But what you can do is one simple exercise is you can click on this. Um, and then what you can do is uh, you can look at the people that Marketo started following. So classic example, the, the most, the person that Marketo recently following, started following is this person who's a director of marketing and communications at this organization. Boom. So you have this person's name, you know their title, and you know where they work. That's a perfect person for you. There's a lead for you. If you're selling a marketing automation or communication solution, you have a lead for you to go after. The reason that they're recently started following Marketo is, is that indication, meaning they're, they're either working with Marketo or planning to do research. That's perfect for you to go after. And again, you can go after every one of them and see which kind of companies uh, and people from there to prospect. Does this uh, make sense? Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, so that's, that's one way of you know, getting leads via competitive engagement. Um, so that's that. Uh, let me show you something interesting, the events. And we talked about that is how you can re- reach out to people that are attending specific events without even sponsoring and pay, you know, paying $20,000 to sponsor a booth or something. Um, so let's look at this. Uh, I, I put in this, this event because we were, I was recently looking at it. So social media week is a, is a pretty big conference. It's very much focused to people that are selling, you know, social media to brands and stuff like that. So companies like, you know, a spread fast or sprinkler or crimson hexagon or brand watch, they would all care about this. They'll all be going to this. So one of the things you can do is you and social media week, London, there's an event happening right now. So, and their hashtag is SMW London. Typically all events have their own hashtag. So you can go in on Twitter or you can even search in Hootsuite itself. Or if you don't want to sign up for Hootsuite, you can just put in the hashtag here and you can see a bunch of tweets that are coming about this event. And in this case, they're all, if you see here, all of them are actually from Social Media Week London. So that's not a, not a best, uh, best example of, 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 of lead yeah. generation here. But, but, but then there might be people that are talking about it that are not, Social Media Week London. There are people that are going there. So yeah. let me try this. Um, yeah, try um, Dreamforce. There you go. Yeah. So D- Dreamforce's event, I think, was DF17. So let's look at um, who are the people that are talking about Dreamforce 17. Let's look at the most recent tweets. And um, here is a list of people that, that have been recently talking to or about Dreamforce. These are all people that were either gone, gone there or, or were planning to go. Some of them might be Salesforce customers, Salesforce employees themselves, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, that's something that you have to f- filter through, unfortunately, if you're doing it manually. But there will be a lot of people that are, that are not Salesforce employees, and that would be someone that, that, that would be great. So, for example, Blair. I don't know if, if Blair is, uh, works at, at, at Salesforce. Uh, but she, she, she works with, you know, contact center industry analyst, and she's a big fan of social media software. So you would probably want to further research into Blair. And if you're selling a social media software, in this case, Blair would be a great person to go after. Um, Michael Litt, uh, Michael is the CEO of Vidyard. So, you know, Michael was there at Dreamforce. 
that's that's a great in for you. If you had to book a meeting with him, you could have reached out to him earlier and say, hey, can I can I have a chat with you for your sales solution or marketing solution or you know, email solution, whatever you have. Mm -hmm. so that's and another it, way of, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, and it doesn't have to necessarily be, you know, the week after the event. It could be, you know, next year, call it summer, you know, Absolutely. leading up to Dreamforce. Absolutely. What, you're, what you're saying is you can go look at DF17, the hashtag, and see who went last year and then try and re-engage him. Hey, you're going back totally. this year. Totally. Absolutely. Very cool. Yes. Yeah. So that's one way. Um, so those are, those are a couple of social media type ways. The other Love thing it. that you can do is, uh, thank you. Um, the other thing that you can do is, uh, oops, somehow it doesn't let me. Okay. Here is uh, Google Alerts. So, I guess everyone is pretty familiar with Google Alerts. Um, it basically scours the public web. And I don't think they include social media, but more blogs and forums and those kind of channels. And you can search for a keyword. So for example, you can set up the stream social selling, for example, mm -hmm. and it will search you know, only English language conversations in any region and it'll send me an email. Um, and I can, I can say, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm blanking out. Um, let's say online fraud, for example. So if you have a online, if you have a you know, security software, you can say anytime someone is talking or any discussions happening about online fraud anywhere on the public side of the web that Google's picking up, uh, send me as it happens in real time. And you update alert and that's it. That's, that's your uh, online alert that you have set up. And anytime that happens, either you can send a summary once a day or in real time, you'll get a notification, which might get annoying depending on the volume. But that's another great way for you keeping, keeping up with, with conversations that are happening online. So that's another way. Um, I'll show you guys a couple more. Um, this is a pretty powerful one, job, jobs. Um, so let's look at this. So for example, this is, this is something that we would use ourselves. So we care about talking to people that are hiring, uh, demand generation is a, is a big title for us, but right? we try to reach out to demand generation people, for example. Um, so in LinkedIn, again, this is, I believe this is free. So you can go in and you can say, give me a list of people that have posted a job about demand generation, uh, that are hiring for demand generation people in the United States in the last 24 hours. So I have 200 people that are in here and each one of these companies, ScienceLogic, was Burning Glass, Lucid software. These are all great signals for, for me as, uh, as the owner of Leadsif to go after and say, you know, the fact that they're hiring demand generation, they might be interested in learning about new tools that the new demand generation manager can use. Uh, I can further filter by saying, you know, I only care about companies that are in computer software and information technology. I don't care about anything else. And that further filtered my list. Um, I now have how many companies do I have? 81 companies. Boom. So that's your list of 81 companies that you can then go after. You can go into LinkedIn and see who the right person is to go. So if it's a demand generation manager, you would want to talk to the VP of marketing or CMO, but it, it becomes very easy for you to figure out which companies to go after rather than every computer uh, information technology and computer software company in the US, you're going after now 81 companies based on some signal, some, some kind of a trigger, right? Mm -hmm. so that's another one. And it, it gives you a good reason. It's not just, you're not just sending another email template oh, you're yeah. saying, hey, I noticed you're hiring for a demand gen person. Yeah. It's, it's just another step of personalization that shows hundred percent. I didn't just put you, I didn't buy you a list on, you know, whatever list provider yeah. and like threw out my generic yeah. template at you. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that, that is it. You always have context when you're reaching out based on a signal. Uh, and the, another one that I'll show you before I stop here. Um, is uh, is GitHub. So this might not be, uh, you know, relevant for everyone, uh, but it will be very relevant for any anybody that is selling to developers, right? An API or anything like that. So I chose uh, Manifold, which is which is actually a great Nova Scotian company. Um, so they they recently launched. I think today they launched this thing called um, uh, an interface, uh, like um, a plugin for command line. Uh, for fancier command line interface, interactive prompt for command line applications. Um, and I see there is, you know, a thousand people um, that, are, that, are, that are following this, this conversation. So I can click on them mm -hmm. and I can, 
I can see who these people are that are, I can see, get a list of all these people that are following this open source software. So if I'm competing with this software and I can go to this guy, um, I know he, Owen, he works at this company called Facing Front Software. Boom, this is my account and this is the person that I can reach out to because I know one of their uh, employees is following this. So that's a great signal for me to go sell my solution or, 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 or try to get in front of them. And then there's a whole bunch of other people, right? Uh, someone from Discuss or VirtueStream, Logic Hub. So you can see how many leads I, I have here to go after. Again, you do have to do some manual cleaning, mm -hmm. but it's, it's very easy for you to then go ahead and build a list. And, and developers are traditionally, you know, in my opinion, some of the hardest people to reach without Toughest. them just like deleting your, your email or finding oh, yeah. you a spam or, you know, <laughs> complaining. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. But if you, if you reach out to them by, via context, let's say if I reach out to this person, rather than saying, hey, bu hey Owen, buy my software. Mm -hmm. But if I reach out to them saying, hey, saw so you were following this, this new, uh, this repo on GitHub. I'd love to learn more about why you're using it. And by the way, this is what I do. Would, mm -hmm. would this be of interest? That's a whole different dynamics when you're reaching out to developers, for example. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. And and it gives you like, it's, it's their, it's their developer LinkedIn profile. Like you can look That's at this James Greenhill guy and like, Hey, it yeah. looks like you like Bojack Horseman too. You know, there you blah, go. blah, 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 blah. There oh, you I, go. See, yeah. I see you're a contributor to this repo. Yeah. That's so many correct. options. Oh, that's Absolutely. such a good idea. Yeah. Thank you. I uh, love uh, it. So yeah, you're, you're welcome, man. Uh, so there, again, these are just some of the different ways that you can manually do it. But as you can see, the key thing is all of this is using public sources. You don't have to pay a cent to do it. Mm -hmm. Again, the challenge is it does, uh, it, manually doing it takes a lot of time. You have to filter through some things, uh, but, but you, it can be done. Basically, that's what I'm saying. And it, it requires some experimentation to figure out which ones are the most relevant to you. 100%. Some channels would be better than others. Totally agree. Yeah. Yep. Tukan, that was amazing. I know we went a little bit Thanks, longer than we, than we expected, but this was super valuable. And I, I hope everybody else, you know, you know got, uh, learned a lot as well. I, you know, I've done a little bit of social selling, not as, not nearly as much as you have. And, <laughs> and I found it educational. So thank you. Awesome. Awesome. No, thank you for giving me the opportunity to chat, man. This was well, great. It was great to have you on the show. If people want to get in touch with you, you know, what are you, you know, what's the best way for them to, to reach out and say, Hey, Tukan, that was amazing. Thank you. Awesome. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, look me up or you can send me an email at tdas at leadsef.com or ju just go visit leadsev.com and you can get a lot of insights about you know, what, what we were talking about today and, 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 and learn more about it. Perfect. Well, thanks for coming on the show. And everybody, I'd love if you could, you know, say hello to Toucan if you, got, if you found that this episode was valuable. Um, shoot him an email, say thanks. Um, if you could do a favor for us, every time you go into YouTube, you hit subscribe, go into iTunes, rate us five stars. It helps us reach more people. You know, if you could do one, you know, one little thing, do two cons thing, but you know, if you're feeling ultra, ultra generous today, love it. If you could help us out, subscribe on iTunes and YouTube. Awesome. Thanks everybody. See you next time. Thank you.